One, two, three, four, one. My body is spinning. I need a soul for real. There's a desert in my mind. The storm's blowing in. How are you, Brady? Hi, Martin. How are you feeling? Brian? Enjoying the bit of sunshine. Did the oncologist call? Well, she did. Nice girl. Fahima. I think she fancies you. There, who will you stop? She reckons there won't be no operation anyway. It would be too risky with the tumour being so close to the optic nerve. There are still treatment options. Oh, that's what she said. Treatment options. Then she went on to talk about chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And I said, look, I says, I'm an old carer. It's not much to look at, but it'll get me around for a while yet. Now, I could go out in the morning, I says, and fill the tank with what's in. And I might go like a rocket for a day or two. But I'd make sure it's injured. Then she wouldn't start in the morning. Oh, I'd still have the care, but it wouldn't be worth the course. What did she say to that? That's what she says she. And then she says, <laughs> that reminds me, she said, you're not allowed to drive. <laughs> and account maybe I might get a seizure. Ah, sure is me own fault. You should have kept me big mouth shut. I'm getting more like Seamus every day. Did you speak to Seamus? I did, only for a few minutes. I told him you'd fill him in on the details. He's packing in the job, you know. Is he? What's he gonna do? Reckons he's gonna come home for a while. He cannot be listening to that bollocks Johnson any longer. Ah, good that the two of you are talking again, eh? Did you go for your walk yesterday? Um, I did, yeah. I climbed my main, walked across the Mount Turks to Linan. Oh, my God, that's a big walk. How long did that take you? All day. My legs are hanging off me. Beautiful up there, though. The views are spectacular. On me old? I doubt if there's a more beautiful place on Earth. Oh, many's the day I spent fishing for salmon in the Aina Valley. I'm torched on one side of me in the twelve bins on the other side of me. Giant shadows sweeping down over the lakes ahead of the clouds. Oh, to go from brightness to darkness and minutes and back again. Not a cloud in the sky yesterday. On a clear day you'd be sitting beside the lake. It'd be like a mirror reflecting the sky and the mountains. After a while you would know which way was up and which way was down. Through the looking glass. There's nice one through some place anyway. I used to fish beside the children's graveyard. Children's graveyard? I never saw any graveyard around there. I should do some back. The killing. Where they used to bury the children that would be born out of wedlock. Or children that wouldn't be baptized, right? So they couldn't be buried in consecrated ground. Where is it? Oh, down by the dairy clear boats. A little field there before you come to the lake. You can still see the mountain stones there where they buried the children. Are there no headstones? Oh no, no headstone. So the church didn't want people to know that these babies existed at all. I tell you what there is though. Every grave has a hawthorn grown out of it. The ground is completely barren, except for a single Wind battered hawthorn grown out of every mount. Why? I don't know. Blanco, you know, we all knew never to cut down a single hawthorn, for that's where the fairies gathered. Maybe the old people wanted to mark the grave somewhere or another. All the hawthorns have strands of wool hanging out of them from the passing sheep, like. Were the babies stillborn? Well, that's what they'd have you believe. How do you mean? According to the old timers, 
if a baby was born out of wedlock long ago, the priest would arrive and take the child and that would be an end of it. You're fucking joking. They kill the babies? Well, they bury them anywhere. But how does nobody know about this? Oh, plenty of secret graveyards from the past as well. That history doesn't fit in with the pro-life stance of the church. I used to sit beside those graves fishing, with the beauty of life before me, the tragedy of life all around me, and an emotion would build, something I could feel but couldn't explain. I realized that the mystery of life was deeper than any lake, too deep for the like of me to understand anywhere. I think poets call that the sublime. Is that what it is now? Poetry, no less. Poetry comes in many forms. You know, Seamus said the same thing the other day and he was talking about Tom Yeroa. He said, him roaring and cursing at the cattle back to the land with poetry. <laughs> well, no shortage of alliteration anyway. All those C and F sounds. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh my god. I want you to show me. Show you what? The graves. We'll go on Sunday. I'll drive. Uh, are we load? We'll wear masks in the car. I'll drive with the windows down, bring plenty of hand sanitizer. You bring the sandwiches. And a soap of tea. Uh, I have a big flask. I bring to the bog with me. Uh, and a glass of strawberries out of the garden. Oh, Christ, I can't wait to sit beside that lake again. And you will. <laughs> we will. Graveyards need the living as well as the dead, even secret ones. Oh, that's ma'am home. I'll call up to you later. Brady? I know. I'll bring you loop the loop. How are you, Brady? Seamus. How's everything? Martin says he spoke to you. He did. He says he had a bit of an old brain tumour. Did he tell you what the consultant said? Well, he just said it wasn't good. He said that you'd fill me in on the details. It's not good. Jesus, there's two E in it. I know it's not good. Look, I'm, so I'm sorry, Brady. The tumour is close to the occipital lobe, hence the problems with vision. It's obviously malignant. Grade three. For fuck's sake. Is there a treatment plan? He's already on Decadron. The oncologist prescribed Delantin as well. He's been having seizures? No, not yet. But she thought it best to have him on the medication now. Okay. Who's the oncologist? Fahim Harry. She loves Martin. Oh, I'm sure he turned on the charm. Don't you know well he did? I gave her the details. She'll be in touch once she consults with Professor Scanlon and the team. Did Dad not give her my details? Has he put you down as next to kin? It's only because I'm here. He's being practical. Practical? We'll change it over once you're back. He told you I was coming back? Is it a secret? No, no, I just, I just wanted to talk to you about it. Well, it's got nothing to do with me. Come on, Brady, it's everything got to do with you. <laughs> if you think you'll come home to find me turning a fattened calf on a spit. <laughs> well, nothing quite as biblical as that now, but anyway, you're a shy chef. How in the fuck <laughs> would you know I am? I might have become a great chef. Oh, and have you? Yeah. <laughs> Cater to a very specific palate. Mm -hmm. Look, buddy, Dad's a bit worried about me coming home. Really? What did he say? Uh, nothing. I just know by him. He's worried that you'll stop coming to the house if I'm there. Look, when I was home from Mam's funeral, it was weird as fuck. 
You stayed away from the house. I paid my respects. I know, I know. But you stayed away from the afters and the wake and all Dad was doing was asking after you. Watching the door like a hawk. I didn't feel comfortable. I know, and, and honestly, buddy, I'm not blaming you. But Dad resented me being there. I doubt that, Seamus. He, he, he did. He, he didn't say anything, but he didn't have to. And, you know, I felt unwelcome in my own house and unwanted at my own mum's funeral. Look, we have to be able to spend time together, Brighty, for Dad's sake. It's not easy for me, James. No, I know. It's not easy for me either. Every time I see you, I feel sick to my stomach. Sorry, that came out wrong. I, I mean... In a good way. The sight of me makes you feel sick to your stomach in a good way. No, <laughs> not a good way. I mean, you know what I mean. I don't know, have I ever seen you lost for words? Yeah. Martin tells me you're leaving the NHS. Well, I'm going to take a leave of absence anyway. Ah, I need to get out of this place, Bridie. Oh, London finally lost its charm. Well, if you want to discover the true nature of a place, observe it during a crisis. So what's the plan for Dad? Will they operate? Fahima thinks it's too risky. Hmm. They'll probably recommend chemo. That reduces the tumour they'll target while it's left with radiotherapy. The treatment will be tough on him. But he is strong, and that's something. What? What? You have that look. What look? That you have something to tell me. What would I have to tell you? <laughs> oh, uh, how's your mother? <laughs> Asking after you. <laughs> Sorry, Bridie, for calling the house. Can Egypt. I know. Here she wasn't bad enough. I know. It's 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 just I couldn't get through to Dad and and you weren't. What? What? Did you think we were both kidnapped or something? That's exactly what he said. I think his sarcasm is beginning to wear off on you. Maybe maybe it's you who brings it out in us. What's with the paranoia? I thought you'd given up the drugs. I have. I haven't even had a drink in three years. You know. Back when I was on the lash, I'd, I'd always say the wrong thing. Insult people with my sledgehammer wit. I remember that. Well, I'd give them a call the next day, you know, to apologise. Say I had a few drinks, too many, or I was off my head, or whatever. Tell them I didn't mean a word of it. What was always grand? I always had drink or drugs to blame for being an asshole. So when I got sober, I thought, great. I won't have to do that anymore. But it turns out I'm still an asshole. Except now I can't call in the morning and apologise. Hello? Yeah, it's Seamus. Yeah, sorry about what I said last night. Ah, no, 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 I was stone cold sober, so obviously I meant every word. Bye. <laughs> so that's my great epiphany, Bridie. After all the years of mind expansion and exotic travel and sitting by a hundred deathbeds at age 50 sober as a goat I realize an asshole is just who I am you know feel free to jump in at any moment there and disagree Bridie oh, no. just as soon as you say something I disagree with look that brings me back to what we were talking about about us being able to spend some time together I'm willing to give it a go, for Martin's sake. Really? On one condition. Anything. Whatever you want. You need to make amends with my mother. <laughs> You're pulling the piss. That's the deal. You make amends with Mum, and I'll play it cool around Martin. But sure, how am I fucking supposed to do that? That's for you to figure out. Now look, no offence, Bridie, but Nelson Mandela himself couldn't make peace with Mother Teresa. 
He'd have figured out a way. I'm off. Seamus. There was a time when Nelson Mandela was just an asshole. My body is thin. I need a soul for him. There's a desert in my mind. The storm's blowing in. I have learned to give up. Cause it could not make it up. Only the fools in my world. With anything to prove. 